Hi everyone, welcome to FT Insights. I'm Mike Fibus, and welcome back to our video series exploring Wi-Fi 7. In this video, we'll focus on exactly what it is that makes this latest generation of Wi-Fi so special. And just like our last video, we have Andy Davidson from Qualcomm to do that with. Hi, Andy. Hi, Mike. So in previous generations, you know, the network was always designed to make and manage high-speed connections. But to me, the biggest difference between Wi-Fi 7 and the previous generations is the toolbox it has to just keep putting together high-speed connections in more and more scenarios. So your odds of actually getting one of those sought-after connections are much better. Am I, am I close here? Oh, absolutely. I'd say the, the classic approaches that are taken in Wi-Fi to, to get into higher throughput are to do a higher level of modulation or to do wider channels. And, and of course, Wi-Fi 7 has both of those. It has 4K QAM modulation, which means you can put 20% more data into every packet that you send. And then 320 megahertz channels uh, means that you've got uh, twice the capacity, twice the throughput that you did in Wi-Fi 6, where you had the 160 megahertz channels. But maybe the, the most innovative new approach that allows you to get to that, that higher throughput is the, the multi-link capability that is in uh, Wi-Fi 7. The AP uh, typically has a 2.4 gigahertz channel that you're going to use to connect your IoT devices. And you would use, if you're at very long range, to get a sort of lower speed, but still maintain a connection. And then they tend to have at least two high band, high speed connections. So they might be two to five gigahertz is, is very common today. And with, with the rise of six gigahertz, it's, it's either you know, two at five plus one at six or one at five plus one at six. With multi-link, you can take advantage of two of those high band channels in order to get a much better performance. There's a couple of different methods I'll tell you about to do that. One of them is called alternate multi-link. Think of that as you can use one or you can use the other, but you can't use them at the same time. And what it does is it means if one's congested, you can kind of dynamically swap over to the other one. The other one's called simultaneous. And in simultaneous, you can use both at the same time. So you get the aggregate performance of both of those channels. And that's what really gets you to uh, peak throughput in a lot of the, the cases. So even if your AP doesn't support a 320 megahertz uh, bandwidth in the country or at the location you're at, you can still get to 320 by with a 160 megahertz plus 160 megahertz. Now, some places that's going to be in uh, 5 gigahertz plus 6 gigahertz. Some places in the world don't actually have uh, six gigahertz allocations yet. So they could get to with what tends to be called uh, five gigahertz low plus five gigahertz high in order to get uh, 160 plus 160. This is really important in some very important markets, uh, for example, China, where the, there's, there's uh, no clear targets when six gigahertz is going to arrive, but they do have 160 megahertz and then 80 megahertz channel and five gigahertz. So with uh, the ability to aggregate those two together with, with multi-link, you can get to 240 megahertz. This is a technology that we call high band simultaneous multi-link. It's the ability to work in both of the high bands simultaneously or, or even within the same high band twice uh, you can operate. And really important in terms of delivering that, that extra high throughput. So high band simultaneous multi-link, it, it gets you the same congestion avoidance that you would get with alternating multi-link, plus it gets you the aggregation, which gets you that extra throughput everywhere. Yeah, in, in the first video, you also mentioned preamble puncturing. I, I assume that brings a whole lot more uh, efficiency, performance, lower latency as well, yes? Yeah, that's another important feature. Because I, again, the mission is to, how, how do I make sure that in every circumstance, I, I can get the highest throughput that's available? So if, if you're operating somewhere where the, there's uh, 
part of the channel is obscured, but you could still get to a wider channel uh, by going around it. The, the AP could select, for example, let's say there's 20 megahertz that's consumed, but all of either side of that's fine. It could still get to a 300 megahertz channel, or you know, if there's 40 megahertz blocked, it can get to a 280 megahertz channel. So this ability to just go around whatever the interference is and the client can receive on both sides of that really allows you to get to more throughput in more places. Yeah, that makes sense. So we've done a pretty good job going through the, uh, the features that really make Wi-Fi 7 special. And uh, in our next video, we'll, uh, we'll talk about what this all enables, you know, both for today's applications as well as in the future. And so until then, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.